Almighty God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to gather together for worship. We've come together as the church, your church. We've come but for a moment to refresh ourselves, to renew our spirits, to cleanse our souls so that we might continue on the journey that you've set before us. Oh God, we gather inside this morning on a weekend when the rains have come. Many of us have been forced to stay inside and and to slow down. May we slow down for a moment this morning, oh God. May May we be fully present here and fully in your presence so that your presence may be known in our hearts. Oh God, open our eyes that we may see our ears that we may hear, and our hearts that we may truly know and understand all you have to say to us in this place on this beautiful morning. For we offer ourselves in worship and praise and thanksgiving. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Let us now affirm our faith with the historic confession, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. If you have children with you this morning, I hope you'll let them come spend a few minutes with me. Come on down, guys. Well, good morning. So what did y'all do on that lazy rainy day yesterday? What did y'all do? What did you do? Video games. What did you do? You had a sleepover. You what? Oh, plants grew. That's right. That rain made the plants grow big time, didn't they? What else? So we stayed inside, played some video games. We had a sleepover. We watched the plants grow. I, you know what I did yesterday? Is I worked on cleaning out my office at home. Because it was a mess. Piles of paper all over the place. Did you know we're almost like right in the middle of spring? It's hard to believe. This morning I I saw some people posting on Facebook that they'd had to turn on their heater in their house on May the, what is today, May the 4th? Today's May the 4th, people having to turn on their heat. We actually turned on the heat in the sanctuary this morning because it was just a hair chilly. But we're halfway through spring. And a lot of time people in the spring do spring cleaning. Have, Have mom or dad ever made you like clean up your room just to declutter? Yeah. Have, has mom or dad ever made you kind of get rid of some old stuff? You had to do that? Like some toys that you hadn't played with in a while? You know what tends to happen is you tend to see those toys and you're like, I forgot I had that, and you play with it again. You know, sometimes we can just go shopping in our own closet, can't we? Find new and exciting things. Well, part of spring cleaning is getting rid of stuff we don't need anymore things and stuff. But we also have stuff inside that we need to get rid of sometimes. Sometimes we're upset at somebody and, and we need to get rid of that or we're, 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 we're sad about something and we need to get rid of that. And so sometimes, just like we got to get rid of some of our stuff that we have, 
Sometimes we need to let go of some of the things that we're feeling so that we can move on and, and be better people. And so spring cleaning takes on all kinds of forms and shapes. And I suspect if your parents hadn't made you do it yet, there might be some spring cleaning at your houses at some point. So get, you, you, it sounds like you've been all about that. <laughs> You did. Did you sell some stuff? No. I'm saving my money so I can go to the city. Ah. You better keep saving. You, what? Well. Yep. Well, y'all do some spring cleaning in all those ways, and things will be wonderful. Will y'all bow your heads and pray with me? Dear God, thank you for all the things we have. From time to time. Help us let go of those things we don't need and help us grab on to your spirit and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. You can head to Children's Church and go back and sit with your parents. Good morning. We've come to the point in our worship where it's an opportunity for you and God to have a conversation. And on this Sunday morning, we are just grateful for all that God has done in our lives. I was sharing with someone as I walked into the sanctuary this morning that yesterday was a lot of rain. But you know what? We needed it. And for that, we ought to be grateful. So let's take a few moments. And let's spend a couple of moments just talking with God and petitioning him on your behalf. And then I will lead us corporately. Let us pray. Most gracious God, as we pause for just a few moments... We are just rejoicing in this day, rejoicing in the fact that you have allowed us to see this day. For God, there were some who uh, were not able to wake up this morning. God, but you saw fit to allow us to see this day, and for that, we're grateful. God, we're grateful for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. God, we're happy for life, for health, and strength. God, give us the assurance that you are with us, that you're guiding us and that you're directing us. God, and as we think about all of the many things that we have to do, God, put a smile on our face and let us know that you have given us the ability to do them. God, we're grateful. We're happy. God, we love you and we're thankful for all that you are doing in our lives. God, and those that may be on our minds that may be dealing with illness and sicknesses, God, let us give those persons to you. God, and let us know that you are doing what you see fit in their lives. God, if you need for us to make a call or send an email or send a text, God, give us the spirit and the wisdom to do so. God, we want to be your hands and your feet in this world. God, a world that needs hope, let us provide that hope. Let us reflect on what you've done so that we can do it for others. God, we love you and we thank you. For in your son, Jesus' name, who died so that we could have life and have it more abundantly, we all said, amen.
I have wasted and the pleasures I have tasted that you were never in. And I confess that though your love is in me, it doesn't always win me when competing with my take a moment just real quick this morning. I realize I don't do this frequently enough, but as I look at the communion table, Miss Bonnie Lane came in this morning and got our communion elements ready, and, and so grateful to her for doing that, and um, Carol Colley usually does that, and Ellen Hicks uh, uh, are all three women who do a lot of work to, to make sure that our sanctuary looks beautiful, that, that things are all the way, where they should be, when they should be, and for so many years, the, the women of the church predominantly in the, through the Altar Guild and have, have done that. And, and, and most recently during my time at Atlanta First, uh, Ellen and Carol and Bonnie have been three of those that do that very frequently. And for them, I'm very grateful. Um, it's uh, wonderful to know when you come that uh, things are going to be here. One, one Sunday in Pine Mountain, they, we had it first Sunday, every Sunday in Pine Mountain, and I, 
I got there on Sunday morning, and, and we had wonderful people there too, but one of them was not well and had forgotten, and I was at the corner store in, near Callaway Gardens. If you've ever been to Callaway Gardens, there's, there's not, you know, Pine Mountain, there's not a lot open on Sunday mornings, and so I went down to the corner store, and they had one bottle of grape juice left, and it had dust all over the top, so I, I just blew the dust off and prayed that God would bless it and make sure that no matter how old it was, it would be just fine, and fortunately, the subway had opened, and they were, breaking fre- they were baking fresh bread uh, for, for their sandwiches, and I got two loaves of, of uh, Subway bread, so we had um, Subway bread and grape juice that may have been fermented by the time we had it. I don't know. It had been sitting there a while, but um, it all went well, but that being said, there are so many people um, that serve this church and that you don't ever get to see. Another one that's here, and she's going to kill me for doing this, but Miss Madeline Mitchum's here this morning. Um, and those of you that don't know Madeline, she does so much for the church, our financial secretary, and does so much. Um, and her husband, Wayne, uh, works around doing things. And so um, she'll, I will pay for that tomorrow, but that's all right. It's worth it um, to, to thank her for all she does on our behalf in so many ways. So thanks to her. Also, I just want to quickly, because it gets lost sometime in announcements and, and things, but... Our children's ministry is just absolutely beginning to hit on all cylinders and and just so excited about so many people that have been involved with that um, and, and if I start naming names i'm gonna I'm gonna miss people but um so many of you that have volunteered since you know many of you volunteered when it was the the the, the um, children's division and it was down where our day school is now, and so many of you remember teaching then but in, more recently so many of our our parents and grandparents have been volunteering, and you saw the number of children here, even on a rainy Sunday morning. Um, and I'm grateful for Edwin's leadership as, as we talked, as he was coming on board, and I told him that children's ministry was a priority, and that was something that he had worked on and was familiar with, and he's continued to work with the team that Sarah Watson built um, before she left. I mean, it's incredible um, when you combine what's going on on Sunday morning, what's going on Monday through Friday at our day school, there are a lot of incredible things happening in children's ministry, and um, we're, gonna, we're likely going to have our, our, a confirmation class. We haven't had a confirmation class in several years, and so plan on having a confirmation class this year um, and have enough children beginning to, to grow up that over the next few years we should have a regular confirmation class uh, beginning uh, this year. And so lots of incredible things going on in the life of our church, and I think on a rainy day to bring a little light into our lives and to celebrate the things that are going on. It's a wonderful thing to do. So this morning, I'm going to take just a few minutes. We've got Communion Sunday, and then this, this, this message, this sermon kind of ties into what we do around the communion table. It, there are a couple times a year when people tend to kind of get organized and get cleaned up. The first one, when do you think the first one is? New Year, I heard it somewhere. And then the second one, for some reason, is spring cleaning. Spring cleaning, and that people do their, their spring cleaning. I know around my great-grandmother's house and my grandmother's house, that was kind of what we always did. You always heard them talk about spring cleaning. I guess maybe during the winter, we just kind of get tired and cold, and the days are shorter, and we kind of hunker down um, in, in our houses, and, and we don't do a whole lot. And then... As spring comes around the corner, things begin to warm up and the days are a little longer and we have a little more time to do things. So somewhere along the way, then we began this, this, this process and this tradition of spring cleaning. And the word I wanted to kind of focus on this morning was decluttering. To declutter. And it, there's tons written on this. I was hoping... Nancy was going to be here this morning, my, my good friend that I run with in the mornings. Um, Nancy has a professional organizing business, so her whole job is to help people organize their lives, and more often than not, at least part of that process is decluttering. Because most people that are not organized, part of the problem is they just got too much stuff around. Now, as you heard me tell the children, the thing that paralyzes me more than anything in the world is paper. Paper is like just, it, it, it uh, just absolutely, yeah, I can't even say it. You know, it just kind of gets a hold of me and won't let me go. And so uh, throughout our marriage, um, we've joked around that I have a very sophisticated piling system. You heard that right. I'm piling, sophisticated, not filing, but piling system. 
The first house that Shannon and I owned, I was, I was out of town, and we needed a very important piece of paper. And so I said, I need you to go in, in my office. Our office was over the, the garage, and I was in seminary, and I was finishing up seminary, and I was a youth minister, and I forget where I was, but I said, all right, there's eight piles of paper along the wall. You go to the third pile of paper from the left, and you go down about a third of the way, and at the top of the piece of paper it says X, Y, Z. And she's like, I'm never going to be able to find this piece of paper. She went to the third pile from the left. She went about a third of the way down. And lo and behold, there was that piece of paper sitting right there. When I first came to Atlanta first, and another person that just invaluable to me is Cornelia. And, and we had those little notes that you make you, when you get a phone call and you get a message. You get one of those notes. And a, a few weeks in, I, I went to Cornelia. I said, look, you're going to have to do me a favor. So this paper paralyzes me. If you can just send me an email with that phone number in it, then that, that would save me a lot of anxiety. And so Cornelia, to her credit, she started every time I got a phone message that I couldn't take, she sends me an email, and it has the phone number in there, and then that saves me yet another piece of paper. So I really did. Yesterday, I spent the better part of that rainy Saturday in my office at home going through, once again, my sophisticated piling system. I'm pretty good at filing, too, so once I ever get around to it, I can kind of get that stuff where it belongs. But that's the one thing that just absolutely kind of gets a hold of me and, and, and won't let me go. But we have, to, we have to declutter. We have to think about why it is that we have clutter to begin with. Uh, the first thing I want to I wanna read for us this morning is from Luke's Gospel, uh, from Luke's Gospel, the 12th chapter beginning in the 13th verse. So Luke 12, beginning verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Friend, who set me to be judge or arbitrator over you? And so he said to them, Take care, be on guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And then he told him a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, I know, I'll do this. I'll pull down my barns and I'll build larger ones. And there I'll store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be now? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. So, you know, they had a spring like we've had in Atlanta, and the the rains came and the crops were just flourishing. And this man had more than he's ever had before. And, And at that point, he had two options. He could either share the abundance, sell the abundance, do do something with the abundance, but instead, he tore down perfectly good barns and built new, bigger barns and stored that stuff. And at the end, God told him that that very day he was going to lose his life so that all that the work he had done and all that he had put up for himself here would be gone. Whose is it going to be now? Now, I'm very careful whenever I, I preach uh, on these issues. I, I want to be very careful. There, there is nothing wrong with having stuff. There's nothing wrong with having possessions. There's nothing wrong with having an abundance of things. It's all about our perspective on those things and that stuff and those possessions. It, it's all about our men, mentality toward all of those things and all that stuff. And so it's about stewardship. It's about being good stewards of what God has entrusted to us. And so as we look at things, as we hold on to things, it's what kind of value we place on those things. And decluttering in our houses means being objective. I was reading, I read several fun articles in preparing for this. And, and one woman, she, uh, she did this, and I'm, now I'm, I'm treading on thin ice. Um, but this woman had 50 pairs of shoes in her closet. I see some husbands looking around. I'm getting everybody in trouble this morning. So she had 50 pairs of shoes in her closet, and, and she decided that she was going to take one pair of every color, and apparently there's different shades of black I've learned in my house. There's multiple shades of black. You need, not every black shoe is created equal. But she took 
one color, and she put them in boxes, and she put them in storage in the garage. And she decided that if she really needed one of those pairs of shoes, she would go and get it. But if not, she would try to make do with what she had. And she found that after several months, she'd never really needed to go out to the garage to, to get into those shoes. Now, I'll go ahead and tell one on myself. The same thing could be said about golf clubs. Um, I think I have five different putters right now in my collection. Because the problem is sometimes the putters quit working. I mean, they're working just fine, and one day you go out and it's broken. And so you put it in timeout, and you tell it that when it gets fixed, it will come out and play again, and then you go get another one, and you play for it for a while, and, and usually it breaks, and then you put it in timeout, and, and you pull it back out. Well, well you know, the, the old saying in golf, it's not the putter, it's the putter. Um, it's not the putter that's broken, but the person holding the putter that can't see the line anymore or calculate the speed. We have all the point is, you can, you can only wear one shoes, a pair of shoes at a time. You can only play with one putter at a time. But, but it's really not about that even. Because one of the art, other articles I read said, you know, the point's not just to be minimalist. Now, some people in this world live minimalist lives. I mean, they just get down to the very barest necessities. I've read a couple of things recently. There was a gentleman who had built a, an entire house in an area that was no bigger than the bottom part of our chancel area. And it was fully functioning. It had kind of a kitchen area. It had a bathroom. It had a bed. And it was in this very, very tight, tight space. And, and, and he was able to fully function in that space. Another one was a man who traveled back to, forth to New York City from another place. And he had built himself a, an entire place to live in an old garbage dumpster. He had retrofitted this garbage dumpster and it had a little crank up top and, um, and the one thing he had to do is make sure that when he was in there that the garbage truck didn't come along and try to, try to empty it out. And he could move it around to places where he was allowed to leave it, but it was fascinating how efficient he had become in this little bitty space. The fact of the matter is that what many of us do is that we have a, a little house and we get some stuff and we do the same thing that, that Jesus told the parable about is we get a little more stuff and when you're like, we don't have room for our stuff anymore, let's go get a little bigger place and then we'll have more room for our stuff and then when we get a little bigger place, at first we got a little room and then we fill up that room and we think, well, I'll just get a little bigger place and then I'll have room for this stuff. And we know how that process goes. Again, it's not the stuff that's the problem. It's how we look at the stuff, how we kind of hold on to the stuff. We need to be careful and, and consider each thing that we have and why it's important to us. Part of why paper paralyzes me is there are certain things that are just important to me. I think I shared with you last year, I still have the ticket stubs from, from mine and Shannon's first date uh, on Thanksgiving Day 1995. Uh, I, I still have both of those stubs. We just last week celebrated our 14th wedding anniversary. And so there's little things like that. And every year since um, we've been married, Shannon gets roses on our anniversary. And since Zach has been born, every year the card reads, thank you for putting up with Daddy X number of years. Love, Zach. So Zach's become quite proficient at getting my credit card and getting online and ordering the flowers and making sure they go to Mommy. It's a fun thing that we do in our house, but... But Shannon has each of those cards. Now, if the cards were to blow away or to get damaged, it doesn't change the fact that, that we shared in those special moments. But, but every once in a while, it's, it's kind of cool to pull out those tickets and to remember going to, to buy those tickets and remembering where we sat at, at, at Grant Field and remember the conversations that we had. And so sometimes those things are important. But, you know an old basketball that's long since outlived its usefulness or an old couch that doesn't have any springs left or cushion to speak of. I mean, some of those things we just need to be able to move along. Another place that I want us to, to read from is very similar from Matthew's Gospel. 
uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning in the 19th verse. Don't store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. And so the older I've gotten, and I really can say this in all honesty to you, stuff and things just don't mean as much to me anymore. And when people are asked to write down what's most important in their lives, more often than not, the large majority of the time, it's people, it's relationships, it's memories, that those are the things that are most important to us, yet we, we hold on to these other things so tightly. Whether it's the spring or the new year or whenever it is, we have to constantly declutter our lives. And as I've said, it's not just about our stuff, but it's about what's going on inside of us as well. You see, when we come to the communion table, it's about not just decluttering our lives, but decluttering our souls. And and when Jesus gave us the gift of communion, the remembrance of the Last Supper, what it does is it allows us to come to this table, whether it's once a month or or, you know, in some traditions, once a day, or however frequently come to this table, then we're reminded that every moment is a chance to start again. Every moment is a chance to rid ourselves of those things that separate us from God and each other. Every moment is an opportunity for a new beginning. And so when we come to communion, we are able to come and leave behind hatred and bitterness, disappointment, heartache, that we try to leave those things behind. And then when Paul writes to the church in Philippi, Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you always. The extent that we can declutter our lives of the things we don't need. And make room for the things that are important. That are critical. Those things with which life has no meaning. Without which life has no meaning. If we can make room for those things in our lives, then this world would be a better place for us and for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.